Hello everyone and welcome back to Honest Straightforward Reviews. I'm excited to share with you my thoughts on the Gigabyte Eorus Master RTX 4080. This is a complete and thorough review and I'll be putting it up against the Founders Edition 4080, the Founders Edition 3090 Ti and the Founders Edition 4090. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to my channel for more honest reviews on the latest technology. Now let's dive into the review. The Gigabyte Eorus GeForce RTX 4080 Master is part of Gigabyte's diverse custom GeForce RTX 4080 card lineup and follows my recent review of all the NVIDIA Founders Edition and AMD reference card pitted up against each other. The Eorus Master sets itself apart from the Windforce and Game Gaming OC series. The Eorus Master stands out with its eye-catching triple ring RGB halo lights that encircle each fan, with the Windforce card offering a more subtle look and the Gaming OC series focusing on performance with aggressive factory overclocks. The Eorus Master, on the other hand, impresses on both fronts. It boosts a 2550 MHz boost clock, an improvement over the founder editions 2505 MHz. The Eorus Master packs a punch in terms of performance. It utilizes the wind force cooling system with three bionic shark fins alternatingly spinning to reduce the turbulence. Along with 12 composite copper heat pipes and a large vapor chamber in direct contact with the GPU. Inspired by the shark dermal denticles, the fans feature raised ridges that enhance airflow by reducing micro turbulence. The double ball bearing structure enhances heat endurance and efficiency, crucial for high performing components. Each fan spins in the opposite direction of its adjacent one, reducing turbulence and increasing air pressure. Moreover, the fans support semi-passive cooling, which means stopping when the GPU is under low load to minimize noise. The copper heat pipes work in tandem with the vapor chamber to effectively dissipate heat from the GPU and the VRAM to the heatsink. Additionally, the heatsink extends over the PCB to boost ventilation and improve heat dissipation visibly through the back plate cutout as well beyond its cooling prowess gigabyte adds an LCD screen on the card side displaying vital GPU information such as temperature fan speed what's being used etc users can even customize the display content with pictures text gifs and whatnot however the real highlight of the Eorus master is its stunning three ring lighting a true showstopper in visual appeal. The Gigabyte Control Center software allows users to customize the lighting effects to suit their preferences. The Gigabyte Eorus Master 4080 is meant to be impressive on both performance, advanced cooling system and a striking design. Now let's get into my charts and see what I think of it and how I found it. Now before I go into these, this will be segmented into a few sections. First of all, I'll be looking at the card, what it's offering to us, such as the boosts and all that, comparing it to the last generation. Then I'll be doing some content creator benchmarks so here so base mark 3d etc i'll be moving on to gaming benchmarks without rt turned on without ray tracing turned on with the one percent lows then i'll be moving on to gaming benchmarks with ray tracing turned on towards the end i'll be giving you guys an average of all the games i'll be having the average in segmented into two sections where is one with rt and one without rt and i'll be also giving you a dollar value per frame for it and in the end i'll give you my verdict of this card let's get this started so the first very first slide i have is a very detailed slide and it explains how the 4080 is different both from the last gen's greatest card and also the 4080 and the 4090 so here you'll see the only thing that is different about the 4080 eros master is the boost clock the boost clock is higher by about 45 
35 megahertz. Let's get into the gaming benchmarks and we'll see how much of a difference that makes, if any. The next is in regards to the memory clocks and specs. Here you'll see no difference between the Founders Edition and the 4080 Aorus Master. Let's look at something that's very impressive and that is fan noise relative to temperature. First of all, we look at idle. So when this card is idling, it idles at around 37 degrees with the fan stopped. That's a couple of degrees higher than the Founders Edition 4080, which tells you something about the Founders Edition card this time around. Mostly the Founders Edition cards left a lot to be desired. However, with this generation, Nvidia has really picked up the pace and come to the party. Let's look at gaming. So when gaming, the temperature is just about the same as the Founders Edition. GPU heat spot is a couple of degrees higher. VRAM temperature is quite low, which was impressive. It's only 44 degrees compared to the 68 degrees on the Founders Edition. Looking at gaming noise is just about the same. And when we are looking at the fan speed, it's quite low. What that's telling me is the fans are a bit loud, okay? So the Founders Edition are ramping up higher. So as you can see, it's ramped up to 1352 RPM, but it's producing a tiny bit of a lower noise, margin of error. But even if it was the same, it was spinning about 100 RPM less and producing the same temperatures, which is quite impressive of the Founders Edition. Let's move on to the next comparison, which is the comparison of the power consumption. First of all, let's look at idle. Idling, they're about the same, only one watt difference. Going on to two monitors, again, one watt difference. But when you're playing a video, the Aorus Master drinks a bit more, which is three watts. Now, this is understandable because the Aorus Master has a lot of RGBs and that LCD panel on the side of it as well. When you're gaming, on the other hand, the Aorus Master sips quite a bit less power than the Founders Edition. Over 50 watts difference here. When you're going to ray tracing, the Aorus Master sips a bit more than the Founders Edition. Going on to the absolute max that I saw, the Aorus Master didn't go over the 300 mark. When you have V-Sync turned on to 60 hertz, I saw the Aorus Master was sipping five watts more. And when I looked at the transient spikes, I was seeing that it's still consuming a bit less power than the Founders Edition. Let's get into some of our content creators benchmarks. So first of all, I've got Vulcan in yellow. I've got DirectX 12 in pink and OpenGL 4.5 in red. So looking at the two cards, they're on par with each other. Margin of error, those 200, that's not much on a 3000 scale. So between them, there's not too much of a difference. Next benchmark is Blender. And here we have Classroom in Maroon. Rune, junk shop in purple and monster in dark pink and again you don't see much of a difference here they're basically on power with each other the Aorus master just edging out a tiny bit ahead but again it might be margin of error territory next test i have for you guys is indigo supercar and here we're seeing they're again on par with the 4080 edging out a tiny bit up front looking at Un unigen heaven benchmark we can see the 4080 eorus master is about three frames ahead but on 300 frames that's not much of a difference yes if it was like 60 frames then it'll be a bigger difference the second benchmark i've got for you guys is unigen 2 superposition and that's in directx 11 and here again we see about a four frame difference this is a tiny bit more impressive because it's a bit lower but still not that great of a difference especially when we get towards the end i'll talk to you guys about the price of these cards as well next benchmark is 3d mark time spy benchmark in direct x12 here again we see the same story continue the 4080 eros master is a tiny bit ahead but it's negligible next benchmark is 3d mark fire strike ultra benchmark in direct x11 and again the same story continues when we move on to 3d mark port royal high hybrid ray tracing benchmark, we see hardly any difference, just two frames. The last benchmark I have is 3D Mark full path ray tracing DirectX benchmark, which sees only one frame difference between them, and that can be attributed to a margin of error. The first game I have for you guys is the Callisto Protocol at max settings with RT turned off at 2K. We see there's absolutely no 
difference. The only difference you'll see is the one frame difference in the 1% lows for both cards. Moving on to 4K, again, there's just the 1% low. That's the only difference improvement here. Going on to COD, we see that in 2K, the Eurus Master edges out a tiny bit of front, both in 1% lows and average FPS. Going on to 4K, we see that this margin has been, has diminished. Going on to Cyberpunk 2077, we see that the 4080 Aorus Master is quite a bit ahead, surprisingly, about five frames ahead, and also the 1% lows is improved as well. When we go, however, to 4K, I believe there's some sort of issue with a bug in Cyberpunk 2077 when it comes to my Aorus Master 4080. I have done everything with the drivers, I've uninstalled them, installed the latest drivers, I even put it into another system where the Windows had a fresh install and I tested it still at 4K it was giving me this result which is quite disappointing as it'll affect the overall average of this game and I couldn't take it out because this is what I found and I was trying to test it in a few different scenarios but I was repeatedly getting a very low result so the result I got here was a and by the way this is the only time that this card has had this sort of result so I am attributing this to a bug in the game so there's a 15 frame average difference and also about an 11 frame difference in the one percent lows when it comes to cyberpunk at 4k between these two cards going on to formula one the only improvement you see is in the one percent lows for the Eros master and when you move on to 4k it's the average again one percent isn't much of a difference they're mostly margin of errors and you have to consider that when we go on to hitman and we see that there's a four frame difference with a five frame difference in the one percent lows which is nice to see and when we go on to 4k that has all been wiped with just a one frame in the average difference when we go on to halo we see again both cards are equally powerful and they're holding up to each other mind you i have normalized these cards at 40 decibels i have a very good system with eight fans and it's normalized at 40 decibels so they're not brute forcing themselves with a really good result so i've normalized at 40 decibels and this is the results they are giving me going on to 4k with hitman 3 again we don't see much of a difference the only noticeable if you want to really dig into it is the one percent low has improved to two frames for the eros master hunt showdown 2k we see an impressive five frames difference in the average and also a three frame difference in the one percent lows going on to 4k we still see the improvement in two frames in the average and three frames in the one percent low far cry 6 we have a four frame difference in 2k and a four frame difference again in the one percent low when we go on to fry far cry 4k they are identical in their result next game we have is assassin's creed valhalla where we see an imp three frame improvement for the eorus master and a four frame improvement for the one percent low when we go to 4k this is flipped it's four frames behind and a good five frame behind in the one percent lows when we go to dying light to stay human we see the same sort of result for both 2k and 4k however in 4k we do see an improvement in the one percent low for the eorus master the next game i have for you guys is called horizon zero dawn in horizon zero dawn surprisingly again the eorus master was four frames better both in one percent lows and the average fps and this continued when we went to 4k with a two frame difference between the one percent low and average fps when we go on to forza horizon 5 we see a relative similarity between both the cards and when we move on to 4k it's basically the same as well going on to watchdog Legion we see a similar result again and going on to 4k we see an improvement for the Aorus master in three frames and also three frames for the one percent low which is quite good to see next game i have is rainbow six siege test and here we see that there is a six frame average difference for 2k and a four frame one percent low difference while when we go on to 4k they're all wiped out and it's within the margin of error for both one 
frame difference for 1% lows and the average FPS. Next game I have is Resident Evil 3. In Resident Evil 3, the Eros Master pulls ahead again by a tiny bit of 5 frames and an improvement in the 1% low as well. When we go on to 4K, we see this trend continue with a 3 frame improvement and 2 frame improvement in the 1% low. When we go on to Outer Worlds, we see an improvement of 6 frames for the average and 2 frames for the 1% low for 2K. And when we go to 4K, it's just about the same for both. Next game I have is Total War Warhammer 3. Here we see a similar result for both 4K and 2K. There's hardly any difference between these two cards. Going on to Control, we see again both cards are doing really well. They're on par with each other. However, the 1% low is quite improved by 3 frames for the Aorus Master. When we go on to 4K, this continues. The 1% low is still quite good at 3 frame improvement for the 1% low for the Aorus Master. Next game I have is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 2K. We see a 3 frame improvement in the average and a 5 frame improvement in the 1% low for 2K. And when we move on to 4K, it's all wiped out. They're basically about the same with a 1% low of an improvement of 2 frames. The last game as usual I have with RT turned off 2K is The Witcher 3. Here we see there's hardly any difference, just the only thing a tiny bit noticeable is in the 1% low with the 2 frame average improvement for the Aorus Master 4080. Going on to 4K, all of this is again the same with a 2 frame improvement. Okay, let's move on to our ray tracing turned on and the first game I have, unfortunately I didn't have the manpower as you guys can appreciate, I run this channel alone. Just these, these tests alone take me about a good week to two weeks to run full full time like if i wasn't sleeping and from day to night to get them done correctly and then i have to put them together in a slide i have to get all the averages out i have to dub the voice get my understanding do my research on the prices and then edit the video and do, do the recording and everything it just takes so much time so unfortunately i don't have the manpower to do the one percent lows for these i have got a bit of a surprise in the end for you and I think you guys will appreciate for the last two games of the RT turned on. But anyways, let's get through this. The first slide has both 2K and 4K. Looking at 4K, there's not much of a difference in 2K. In Deathloop, the Founders Edition actually beats the Eros Master by three frames, which is quite respectable. Next game we have is Cyberpunk. In 4K, the Eros Master is a tiny bit ahead, margin of error. Same goes for 2K, two frames ahead. In control with RT turned on, they're basically about the same. Only in 2K, the Eurus Master is ahead by one frame. I'll stop saying margin of error because you guys will know one frame here and there is margin of error. So let's go through Far Cry, basically the same story, 89.90 for 4K and 146 for both. Looking at Resident Evil 8, we have the exact same scores nearly for 121 and 122 for 4K and 183 to 185 for the Aeros Master. Going on to Formula 1 2022, Singapore, identical score for both the cards there's no differences whatsoever going on watchdog legions here we see just a one frame improvement both in 4k and 2k for the Eros master next game i have is metro exodus enhanced edition in 4k both the cards are doing about the same 152 to 153 in 4k the Eros master has a two frame lead now this is the first game i have for you guys with the one percent low so i hope you guys appreciate it it's resident Evil 3 remake and here we see that in 2k the Eorus Master has a respectable 5 frame lead which at high end 5 frames still pretty okay and with the 1% lows there's a 4 frame difference. When we go on to 4k we still see the improvement but it's reduced by a bit and it's 2 frame difference in the average and 1 frame difference in the 1% lows. When we go to Hitman 3 we see a 4 frame difference in 2k and 1 
frame difference in 1% lows and if we look at Hitman 3 in 4K we have a 2 frame difference in the average and the same 1% lows. Now that brings us to the conclusion of all these tests. Let's go through the averages and what these mean. First average I've got for you guys is of the RT turned on of the 20 games that I did and this is a 2K average. So we have the Founders Edition at 182.2 frames with a 1% low of 139.55. Here we see the Aorus Master on an average is quite respectable for the 1% lows. They have a 11, nearly 11, 11 frame difference for the 1% low, the improvement. However, looking at the average FPS, there's not much of a difference there, just over two frames difference. Looking at 4K with RT turned off, the average for the 20 games, we hardly see any difference. It's 0 0.05 difference in here for 4K. So they're basically identical for the average. As I've said, one frame here and there is margin of error. So this is 0 0.05. So I hardly think there's anything in there. Looking at 1% lows, the Eros Master is 0.5 ahead. Now, mind you, you got to remember that one game that it really struggled in 4K. This is a result of that. Because if I take that, which I haven't and I wouldn't, but if I took that result out, the Eros Master would be ahead probably by another two frames here and there. Let's look at the best performing GPU without RT. Okay. So without RT, we look at the Founders Edition. We look at 2K. It's $9.38 per frame. The Eros Master is a whole $1 more at $10.38. And when we look at 4K, the Eros Master doesn't make much sense at $16.34, while the Founders Edition is only $14.55. Now, if you want to see this up against a AMD lineup, uh, even an old AMD lineup of last gen RDNA 2, top right hand corner, I have researched it and it will be the similar to this with all the cost broken down in the end. Now, let's move on to RT, which is I think everyone should be paying attention to RT with these cards. RT is the most powerful visual improvement that you can give to your game. I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there going, oh, but I don't need RT. Hey, look, if you don't need RT on, then don't have the maximum set. If you do not have the maximum settings on and no RT on, then you shouldn't be looking at these GPUs. Grab yourself a bargain, get an RTX 3080 Ti or even a 3090 if you want at less than half the price of these and you'll be laughing, okay? But if you're going to be telling me that you're going to turn everything on to the max and not RT, that doesn't make sense because you want the absolute best, you're better off turning everything to very high instead of maximum and having RT on. But these are maximum with RT on. Let's have a look without getting into too much of an argument. I don't want people to comment there and I haven't addressed it. So this is me addressing those comments. Anyways, let's go to 2K first. So 2K, we see a 1.1 frame improvement for the Aorus Master for 2K in RT turned on. And with RT turned on for 4K, there's a one frame improvement again. That's negligible. I would wouldn't harp on too much about it. Over the past with the Founders Edition cards previous to this generation, the 40 series generation, they have been really poorly built. So they haven't been really good. And what I mean by that is if you paired up a Founders Edition card against an AIB, the AIB won in every aspect. They won in noise reduction, they won in cooling, they were better cooled, they were better clocked, and the better clocked actually yielded better significant gains whereas now there's i one percent is not a gain okay one percent is not a gain when you're paying so much more for a overclocked 4080 i would just get the cheapest 4080 if i was you guys let's anyways let's look at the gpu performance based on cost per frame with rt turned on looking at the 4080 founders edition that is 12 dollars 89 and the eros master doesn't make sense at 14 dollars 36 looking at 4k again we see 22 dollars 71 and we see a whopping 25 dollars 19 at 4k your 
better off looking at the cheapest 4090 you can find as the cheapest 4090 I found and that only costs $25.50 compared to $25.19 and the, the boost that you get with the 4090 is leaps and bounds ahead of the 4080. So the 4090 is just a different class. You'll actually see a lot better yield and a lot better value and a lot better performance, especially performance. If you're just looking at performance, you'll get a better performance from a cheapest 4090 out there compared to the Eros Master at the prices that I was able to get. So what I did with the price, I got the absolute lowest price for the Founders Edition because I couldn't find a Founders Edition card in Australia. We don't have that. So I just got the cheapest Founders Edition and cheapest 4080 and a cheapest 4090 and paired them with those prices. And this is the price of the Eros Master right now compared to the frames. Anyways, guys, so that brings us to the end of the slides. Now, let's talk about which card you should get. If you're gaming at 4K and you're looking at the Eros Master, I don't think you should get it. The only way I can recommend is if you're dead set on that LCD display. Not a lot of others do that as well as Eros Master, but it, the software is so buggy. The software from Gigabyte is hell, okay? I do not want to wish that software on anyone. It is a complete nightmare to work with. I wouldn't work with it. I don't like it. I don't know about you guys, but that's my honest feedback. If you're dead set on the LCD, the software accompanying it to control it, it's really bad. It's really bulky. It's really bloaty. It'll bloat your computer. If you're looking at the 4080 4K gaming, I would just look at the 4090, cheapest 4090. Otherwise, if you want to save yourself a buck, the 4080, cheapest 4080 out there makes a lot more sense for 2K and 4K gaming. So I would stay away from the Eros Master, even though myself, I am using an Eros Master in my personal build. I like it. I got it at a lot cheaper price secondhand, and I'm really happy with it. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of this review. Let me know what you guys would have liked to see in regards to this. I'll be doing a PNY RTX Verto 4080 very soon, a review of that. And I'll be doing a review of that against this card. What else would you guys like to see? And by the way, I'm funding everything myself. So if you guys appreciate that, these cards are costing me an arm and a leg and I'm not cutting even in this channel. I'm losing money and I'm supporting myself through my everyday job. So if you appreciate that, drop in a like, watch more videos, subscribe. And most of all, a super thanks really helps the channel out. So if you like this video, if you like my content, please do hit that super thanks button. Anyways, guys, this is basically it from me. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. This video took me a very long time, nearly four months of working on this card to get to you guys because of the one man show. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Comment below, which card would you go for? Would you go for the cheapest 4080? Would you go? I personally think if you watch my review of the whole generation, this generation, RDN 83 and the 40 series card, if you watch that, I let you know what I think we should do and what I would have done if I was in everyone else's place as gamer. So watch that video and see what I think about this generation. What should you be doing? Should you be skipping it? Should you be, which one should you be buying and things like that. Thank you so much for watching it to the end. Take good care. Bye-bye.